नमस्ते मनोयोग इज अ पार्ट ऑफ अवर एंशंट योगिक साइंस विच पोर्ट्रेट्स द एसेंस ऑफ क्रिएटिंग एन इक्वानिमिटी developing a perfect balance and synchronicity between the states of consciousness thereby enabling us to experience the ultimate bliss rotary global yoga summit under the guidance of dr yogi devraj guruji is presenting an ideal platform for documenting and implementing our ancient yogic knowledge worldwide through compendium today we are here to present our work on the research and documentation of a wonderful instrument called the mind in its ancient and modern context under mano yoga so now i request a uh, rotarian dr yogi uh, devraj guruji uh, to give a few words on this global yoga summit which is presenting an international seminar on mano yoga so over to dr yogi dev raj guru ji please thank you thank you vinay sri guru bhyo namaha friends namaste to all of you and i wish you happy independence day we are all celebrating 75th independence day amrit mahotsav and also it is so fortunate that our team is organizing this great program on independence day so that we need to get the independence from our mind also that is why this program probably is coincided on mano yoga international webinar on the independence day itself so i thank everyone organizing team and great team of sri vishwanath guru ji friends mind is both a friend as well as an enemy as described in bhagavad gita but it depends on us how we can make it a friend or an enemy to know that we need to know about mind to know about the mind we need to go to yoga because the whole concept of mind is explained very well in yoga as the definition itself tells chitta vritti nirodha yoga chitta means mind here next comes manaha prashamana upaya yoga again the technique of calming down the mind is yoga as per yoga vasishta samatvam yoga uchchate samatva means equanimity equanimity of mind is again the mind friends in kannada manu is the first human being on earth manu means from the word it started manu smriti then comes manava manava means the person who is dealing or because of mind only so mind plays a very important role in one's life that is why shri vishwanath guru ji has taken up a very good concept of mind yoga if you understand our mind we know ourselves not only ourselves we can understand the whole world using that same concepts of mind friends we are very fortunate to have a great platform of rotary to take this concept fundamentals principles of yoga a ancient wisdom of bharat to the whole world through 35000 clubs of rotary in 220 countries for the la- existing for the last 120 years it's a great organization of service 
where it is said always service above self so this yogic service which we want to give is by preparing compendium on various subjects in yoga because though the whole world accepted in 2015 to conduct international day of yoga on 21st of june but that should not be restricted only to asanas because even in ashtanga yoga asana is only one of the limbs and not only raja yoga or ashtanga yoga there are other parts of yoga also like karma yoga gnana yoga bhakti yoga and other things to make all these things available to the whole world this concept of global yoga summit has started friends though it is going to conclude on in june 2022 in houston usa these are all the preliminary programs which are organizing depending upon the each subject we have successfully conducted one international webinar on the science of pranayama the program taken up by dr devaki madhav ji from mysore this is a second in the process which has started by shri vishwanath guru ji and his entire team they are doing a marvelous work of creating compendium which is going to have all the articles published from australia to america all the researches made on mind from australia to america and also the most important scriptures ancient wisdom of bharat which should be made known to the whole world all these things are going to make a compendium which is to be given to the whole world through united nations especially we are using the platform of rotary for this great work so the next one in the process is divinity in yoga which is going to be taken by shri rajendra ji from australia friends i also thank in this occasion the whole team of shri vishwanath guru ji who are coming out with this project program of giving this international webinar on mind yoga even in upanishads especially mind is taking a great shape because in taitri upanishad in panchakoshas the middle kosha is mind or manomaya kosha which is balancing between vignana maya kosha and ananda kosha on the one side anna maya kosha and prana maya kosha on the other side that is why it is in the middle mind manomaya kosha <clears throat> mind is the one thing which if you know how to manage it it can give a real freedom to each and every one so once again i congratulate our shri vishnath guruji team so that they can take up this congratulations and thank you so much for giving this great project dhanyawad namaste yes uh, thank you thank you so much uh, to dr yogi devraj guru ji yes so this is the rightful moment where we have to uh, take over on the concepts of this seminar on the manu yoga so the first speaker as i would like to introduce uh, our uh, own rotarian uh, shri vishwanath guru ji so guru ji is the founder member and managing trustee of spiritual solution center bengaluru he has been working on uh, prati uh, prati prasava uh, siddhanta from past 12 years uh, he is a mind coach a mind science trainer holistic uh, hypnotherapist past life regression therapist energy healer and a spiritual counselor guruji has been conducting various uh, training program and workshops on mind power uh, prati prasava sadhana uh, the past life uh, regression training uh, hypnosis and hypnotherapy uh, abundance uh, living a law of attraction for people from all walks of life so uh, this is a small a short introduction about uh, shri vishwanath guruji 
so uh, i heartily welcome you ji uh, for this uh, session so over to shri vishwanath guru ji thank you namaste अनेक जन्म संप्राप्त कर्म बंद विदाने आत्म ज्ञान प्रदान तस्म श्री गुरव नम ओम श्री गुरभ्यो नम इन दिस इंटरनेशनल सेमिनार ऑन योगा प्रेजेंटेड ऑनलाइन एट द ग्लोबल योगा समिट ट्वेंटी आई ऑफर मै प्रोनाउ मै ग्राटिट्यूड टू मै गुरु Dr. Shri Shri Ramchandra Guruji, all the masters, yogis, my parents, the universal energy, the guides, supporters, panelists, and all the participants present in this conference. Namaste to all divine souls. In this seminar. we will be presenting and sharing the informations and references about the mind in accordance to the yogic yogic science that is ancient yogic science modern science perspective on yogic science along with the healing aspects of mind the role of prana in creating body mind harmony and transforming impurities of the mind through bhakti yoga this will be shared by each speaker respectively i'm here today to share with you my knowledge and my experience on mano yoga in this presentation we are briefly introducing the first part of mano yoga compendium it's a initial stage and we would like to take it forward for the next level in the future great science and spirituality are the two faces of the same coin they coexist correlate they go together and complement each other in all aspects science is a platform where the principles foundations beliefs notions our existence are brought into observations experimentations analysis reasonings findings evidences and documentations in which the reality is allowed to reveal to blossom identify itself to the unbiased observer the universe we live in is a multi dimensional reality from the sub atomic to the supra galactic in the realms of physics alone medicine psychology and other sciences requires different perspectives and approaches apart from this there are subtle forces influences occult extrasensory and spiritual experiences that many people claim to have experienced they have also developed a special methods of working with these experiences besides any knowledge of the external world is the knowledge of the internal world the perennial quest for self knowledge a knowledge of our true nature which is the inner quest or inner science can be very different in approach than the outer senses this internal world is as vast as the outer world inner science can be understood only with the certain dimensional experiences we can call this inner science 
of self-knowledge, science of awareness, a science of consciousness, and this is yogic science. Guruji was telling about yoga. Our ancient psychotherapy, our psychological scripture, the great spiritual wisdom Bhagavad Gita says, Yoga stah kuru karmani, sangam dektva dananjaya, siddhya siddhyo samobhutva samatvam yoga uchyate. Be steadfast in the performance of your duty, abandoning the attachment, and be equal minded in both success and failure. Such equanimity is called yoga. Here we understand that our psychology book, Bhagavad Gita says, our psychology book, Bhagavad Gita says, the balanced mind, evenness of the mind is yoga. According to Patanjali Yoga, Sut yoga Sutra, yoga is explained as yoga chitta vritti nirodaha. Yes. Stilling the fluctuations of the mind. Fluctuations are nothing but our ego, attachments, desires, aversions, ignorance, negative aspects of our mind. So these are the fluctuations continuously affecting our life in terms of success, happiness, joy, and also purpose of our mind. Stilling the fluctuation of mind. Yoga is restraining the chitta from taking various forms called rittis. Yoga neutralizes the willpools of feeling. Yoga is a process that keeps the mind away from fluctuations. The state where the mind ceases to exist is called yoga. Right. Let's move on. Yoga is an ancient science which is a path of self-realization. Yoga is also a way of life. It is designed to free us from obstacles, imbalances, and liberate us from any fear. Yoga brings us into balance and harmony, giving us the ability to enjoy our life, fulfill our potential, and find our true identity. Next slide. The path of yoga is the path of experience. Path of service, karma yoga, removes impurities of the mind. Path of belief, bhakti yoga, removes turbulences of the mind. Path of experience, raja yoga, removes distractions of the mind. Path of knowledge, jnana yoga, which removes ignorance of the mind. So, Mano Yoga helps to attain synchronicity between the states of mind, the states of consciousness. All these yogic experiences are experienced by everyone, every day. Our ancient scriptures, Vedas, Upanishads, gave profound definitions about our existence way of life and to experience the purpose of life. Upanishads are among the most important scriptures of Vedic tradition. They are some of the oldest known spiritual teachings. All our reference, the main reference, references we are taking from these Upanishads. According to the yoga philosophy, Atman, Self, exists beneath the Pancha Koshas. Guruji was mentioning about it, the five sheets. Spiritual masters say 
these are interlocking caves these are the sacred information given by our ancient sages an ultimate reality ultimate understanding taittiriya upanishad one among the oldest of upanishads it is the source of kosha theory actually it starts from an inquiry koham meaning who am i who am i i am self encapsulated within the five sheets of existence the three upanishad it explains koshas in a profound way the outermost sheath is called annamaya kosha called foot sheath the physical body consisting of skin bone flesh the next sheath is pranamaya kosha energy sheath the sheath consisting of vital energy prana prana is pervasive vyapaka it is the life force that pervades this body and it is the first form of universal energy that keeps us alive the third sheath is manomaya kosha its mind sheath it takes care of all mind related functions it consists of thoughts emotions memories indeed our entire personality resides here the next sheath is vijnanamaya kosha intellect wisdom sheath the sheath consisting of buddhi intellect in fact intellect and mind are same but perform different functions but they are same instruments instruments antakarana it is the place where emotions intellect and ahankara resides expresses next is anandamaya kosha a bliss sheath it is a inner bliss it is a deep sleep untroubled rest and closest to self atman pranamaya kosha manomaya manomaya kosha vijnanamaya kosha these koshas are continuously transforming our life again further classification goes like this five sheets are classified into three groups connected to three body doctrine sharira trayam karana sharira causal body sukshma sharira subtle body stula sharira gross body the causal body is the reason for us to have the subtle and gross body the purpose or the seed of our existence is present in the causal body in the waking condition wakeful state all the five sheets are operating concentrating their action on the physical body stula sharira this physical sensation is absent in the state of dream but three koshas three of these koshas that is vital mental and intellectual these sheets are active and operates in the dream state which is connected in sukshma sharira in the state of deep sleep none of these are active there is only one sheet that is operating is anandamaya kosha the state of sleep that is karana sharira so all these informations are very clearly mentioned in upanishads for any layman anyone who wants to transform themselves uplift themselves definitely they have to understand their existence 
the five sheets can be pictured as one sitting on the top of the other from the gross to the most subtle in reality they are interchanging and interconnecting but they point to the holistic nature holistic nature of vibrant health the need of nourishment of the body mind and soul yes all our ancient yogis sages were great spiritual scientists who explored the journey of our existence and also gave an authentic knowledge about mind here i want to quote one amrita bindu upanishad yes amrita bindu upanishad one of the bindu upanishad clearly says mana eva manushyanam karanam bandha mokshayoh bandhaya vishaya satyam muktyai nirveshayam smritam mind alone is the cause for bondage and liberation when i met my guru ji he told me mind is the root cause for good and bad yes when mind is attached to objects it leads to bondage when it is free from objects it leads to liberation so to find our purpose to reach our real goal we need to focus our mind and we need to bring our mind in yoga so we need our mind to be in yoga my journey started with understanding the subconscious power way back in 2005 i started applying this power into practical experience to help my day to day requirements i took a help of this subconscious power to improve my health to improve my personality and also cleansing of my negativity heal myself all these things really gave a miraculous result actually i started seeing these results and i started continuing to a deeper study of the subject called mind further enhancement on the study i started when i got an opportunity to connect with the wonder world we call it as a wonder world of the mind through the various mind dissections analyzing thousands of minds in the sense meeting thousands of people connecting to their requirements through the process of counseling healing relaxation hypnotherapy pratipasava regressions i got a clarity on how mano yoga can help one to connect to peace joy harmony and bliss in fact all learnings understandings implementations experiences and the connectivity to wisdom is happening in the mind world mano jagat so you take any practice our transmutation transformation has to be processed through the mind itself right so let us do one simple practice 60 second practice good just close your eyes close your eyes close your eyes and feel your body feel your body hear the sounds around you
observe. Keep observing. Feel around you, within you. Keep observing. Just observe. Right. Open your eyes. What did you observe? Thoughts? Open your eyes. Slowly open your eyes. So, lot of activities were going on. Feelings, sensations, images, sounds, even sometimes smell, taste. So all these are the inner activities happening in the mind through the influences of our senses. And it is also expressing on the body. Senses are the carriers of information information to the mind so what is mind it is a form of energy yes it is a faculty of consciousness it is invisible non-physical omnipresent source when we go to when we go to school for training this mind yoga, mana yoga, we ask them, where is your mind? They say they you know they say that the mind is in the brain. But our yogic science clearly says mind is omnipresent. It is everywhere. It is a source of thoughts, emotions, imaginations, memory, perception. And it is a medium where all the cognitive faculties express. The mind is always in motion and is affected in every moment by feelings, images, sounds and other information which it perceives through the senses. Yes. Swami Vivekananda who accessed the extraordinary powers of mind, he said, he who knows and controls his own mind knows the secret of every mind and has power over every mind. Yes. So let us understand the states and functions of the mind. The Mandukya Upanishad it gives a, a complete clarity, understanding of self, the state of mind and consciousness. This alone is enough. Mandukya Upanishad alone is enough to transform our life. Yes. Slide. As I said, it talks about four states of mind. It is commonly experienced by everyone. These are called Chaturavastas, which is waker, dreamer, sleeper, and bliss. According to the Mandukya Upanishad, Jagrut Avastha, that is wakeful state is it all yeah. wakeful state it is connected to rational thinking doing decisive activities and it is a medium between sense organs and the brain capacity to recognize past information through vision taste 
smell, sound or feel. The consciousness in the Jagrat Avastha is turned towards the outer world. It is turned towards the outer world. Vaishwanara, cosmic man. It operates through 19 inlets. So Jagrat Avastha operates through 19 inlets. Five Pancha Gnanendriyas. Five Gnanendriyas. Rupa, Rasa, Gandha, Shabda, Sparsha, Chakshu, Jihva, Grahana, Shotra, Twak. These are the five senses of knowledge. These Nanendriyas gives us some sort of knowledge which connects to seeing, tasting, smelling, hearing and touching, Sparsha. And five Karmendriyas, Pancha Karmendriyas, Five organs of action, walk, pani, pada, payu, upasta. That is for speech, work, locomotion, excretion, and for reproduction. They do not give us any independent knowledge, but they act on knowledge. So five karmendriyas. Then five panchapranas. Five pranas, pancha pranas, prana, apana, vyana, udana, samana. Prana is a sum total of all energy that is manifested in this universe. The whole universe is energy and everything is energy. In this energy, prana is also a faculty of cosmic energy. It is a vital force, sukshma. Breath, what we inhale, it is an external manifestation of prana. Prana is one, but it has many functions to do. According to the different functions, they occupy certain places in the body. So five pranas, then antakkarana. Four antarindriyas, inner instruments. Mano, buddhi, ahankara, chitta. Manas, mind is the realm of desire again, feelings and thoughts. It records all impressions just like a video camera or a tape recorder. Other side, buddhi, intellect, processes, coordinates, and fil filters the sensory impressions. Whatever we receive, the information from through senses, it will be working on that. In fact, Buddhi carries out the assessment and filtering of what reaches to consciousness and what goes back to the subconscious. Right, Buddhi. Next is Ahankara. Ahankara is identity, literally means I am the doer. All our feelings, perceptions, ideas and desires are intimately linked to the Ahankara. It creates the illusion that we are independent, that is identity. Chitta, storehouse, another dimension is wisdom. This storehouse, it forms the basis of our perception and knowledge. It is shaped by the experiences of our life, previous experiences and upbringing, and also connected to culture, education, everything. Chitta determines the basic tendencies and coloring of our mind. Right, so these are the 19 inlets through which consciousness in Jagrata Avastha operates. Jagrata Avastha is again a state of mind, state of consciousness. So the mind is operating with 19 inlets. The next is subconscious state or Sopna Avastha. 
it is the state of dreams here the senses are at rest but object of senses antar indriyas and mind is working one minute yes dream state is the collective experience of our past along with some alteration whatever we dream some of the information what we collect from the conscious state that will be expressed and we don't know other information which is connected there so some alteration will be done in this state the mind itself is the seer and see we cannot take any decisions or analyze in this state the mind is both teacher and the student in this state the consciousness in the swapnavasthe turned into inner world that is connected to tejas again it operates through 19 inlets but it is formed by the mind all the inlets are used again what we access in wakeful state all the inlets are again it is used but it is formed by the mind here the actual physical world that is seen contacted felt through the 19 inlets in the waking state is completely absent the mind alone creates a world of its own which gets experience through its created 19 inlets how it creates in fact we can see hear smell taste everything in the dream eyes dream ears dream nose dream tongue so on and also in our dream we walk we work nothing but dream hands dream legs it's like that so all the 19 inlets work in the swapna vaste through the mind perception good so the next is the third state is unconscious state sushupti it's a stage of deep sleep one minute yes it's a stage of deep sleep and it is a stage of ultra healing it is a state of unawareness the mind is also set to rest along with the senses everybody is taking rest there we are unaware not aware of identity we don't know who am i not aware of the being not even aware of the failures worries or any kind of bad experiences so sushupti is associated with pragna the ultimate understanding of the true nature of existence and reality so here we need to understand the third state is also connected to transformation it is connected with the healing transformation good the last stage is called as turiya chaturtha it is a blissful state yes a stage of transcendental consciousness here we experience ultimate reality truth this state is inexperienced by senses we cannot access this state through senses and also we cannot understand we cannot explain it through the mind conception to reality a state where anything and everything can be created with 
infinite possibilities. In the Turiya Avastha, consciousness, Atman, is neither turned outward or inward. It is beyond both cognition and the absence of cognition. So, this fourth state of Turiya cannot be experienced through the senses or known by comparison, deductive reasoning or inference. It is indescribable, incomprehensible and unthinkable. Yes, unthinkable means we cannot think, we cannot connect the mind. So mind ceases to exist. So these are the four states of consciousness we experience in daily activities as well as in meditation. Good. Next slide. As for the Mandukya Upanishad, Om, which is the symbol of Supreme Reality, stands for the manifested world, the past, the present and the future as well as the unmanifested absolute. The symbol of Om represents all states of mind. So our spirituality has to be under, understand, understood in a different dimensions. Here everything is interconnected. Symbol of Om is representing the four states of our mind. Om is indivisible, indivisible actually. Though it is described to have four states, it consists three sounds, A, O, N, are identical with the three states of waking, dreaming, and sleeping, Jagrut, Sopna, and Sushupti. The fourth state, Turiya, is to be realized only in the silence. After chanting of Om Kara, there is a silence. Yes the Turiya will be realized in that state. It's like behind or beyond the other three. Again, it is invisible. Good. So, we understood Upanishads are expressing or explaining our existence in a very profound way. Now, we need to take the essence of the Upanishads. We need to apply in our life. Upanishads are nothing but all our sages or yogis. They have written this, the science of existence for our transformation. Okay, fine. So now, Mind is the bridge to move from matter to Atma. So we started from Panchakosha, there we got a Manomaya Kosha, Vijnanamaya Kosha. Then we understood the mind and fourth state of mind in brief. Now, we have to master the mind. So mind mastery, correct? Mind is the bridge to move from matter to Atma, Brahman from Laukika to Alaukika, from material world to the eternal world. Practice of meditation, asana, pranayama, yoga nidra, pratiprasava, kriya yoga, holistic hypnotherapy, and all other healing modalities will help to transcend our mind. Yes. So what is stopping us from mastering our mind? Memories. Yes, memories are the base of our life. Memories are emotions. Memories are the collection of related thoughts and experiences. Memories are the reason for manifestations. In fact, memory shapes our life. So, 
what is stopping us we are entangled we are in this memory cycle the memories which we carry are in the form of behavior it is in the form of attitude perception orientation belief communication action reaction assumptions expressions imaginations so all these things is nothing but a memories we are expressing in our daily life is connected with these memories and memory patterns to gain mastery over mind we need to retrain reprogram and reform our mind once again to control or to still our mind what we have to do we have to retrain reprogram and reform our mind so these learnings and training decides success and failure of our life guru ji was telling mind is our own best friend as well as our own worst enemy if you are not taming our mind properly the same our own mind will be working for our problems for our destruction right so understand what is the present condition of our life now the present condition this moment this moment it is created or it is like this because of the past trainings past learnings beliefs and experiences origin of these memories can be understood through karma perspective chitta ignites samskara impression chitta the storehouse antakarana that raises memories smriti which affects as vasana tendencies that creates thought vritti yoga chitta vritti chitta vritti which penetrates through klesha kleshas burdens avidya asmita raga dvesha avinivesha and brings about action that is karma karma gives phala karma phala result and this result whatever the actions we are doing the karma we are doing again it goes back to chitta so this cycle is going on to break this cycle we need to work on healing and cleansing our memories through yogic science these memories have got attached us from many lives in every life whatever we thought we felt whatever we did everything is connected with our impressions every thought every feeling every action it created an impression that impressions the samskara is in the chitta memories so how to come out of this memory cycle again yogic science mano yoga prati prasava sadhana our ancient practice helps to reveal the root cause of the problems it helps to relive and understand the cause and effect it helps to cleanses heals and releases the blockages realigning retuning reorganizing our thought patterns all these things will happen through this sadhana the same thing will happen in meditation also that is also a profound way of cleansing our memories when you sit for meditation thousands of thoughts will rises arouses we think that why these thoughts are coming i want to calm this mind what is happening all those thoughts are coming out to release from us it wants to go away from us that's why it is coming out 
when it is coming out we are not allowing that to go out we are not letting to go we are again holding it we are again doing samsara with that thought that's why it is again going to the chitta stage so pratiprasa sadhana is one of the profound healing therapy which can heal the emotional wounds blockages fears phobias failures rejections unanswered unexperienced experiences events situations by working with the memories of the past yes with this i would like to conclude on the fact that we just have to re search within we need not do re research we have to re search within our adhyatma gnana ancient wisdom is already there to give that clear clarity of spiritual science this life science is right there with proof with validations with accuracy modern science can get its values assertions calculations theories definitions all here right in the wisdom box the foundation of modern science is spiritual science so this journey of compiling mano yoga compendium has taken the first step we are delighted at this mere thought that ancient research and a depth knowledge of our rishis is impending to the world in the form of one manuscript our effort is to reach all the possible masters who have contributed and doing sadhana on this subject i have taken references and extractions from many masters organization to compile this presentation so we would understand manoyoga through the perspective of modern psychology and modern understanding of mental health from our next speaker dr navin ji my gratitude to the universal energy my guru ji dr yogi devraj guru ji all the fellow rotarians and organizing team panelists and my dear participants so with this i'm concluding my session namaste thank you all